So let's talk about some golf shots that you need to learn if you want to get out there and play your best golf. These are golf shots that often people aren't practicing or thinking about trying to improve, but they're shots that you might have to play nearly every round of golf you play. Little test for you to kick the video off. What I want you to do is think about each shot that you played last time you played, and maybe in the comments down below, tell me how many shots did you have to play that you haven't practiced, like you just haven't practiced for ages right. compared to, so if I say like a tee shot with a driver off the tee, I'd say I've practiced that, I've been to a range, I've hit shots, I've practiced it, I've got some patterns of how I know that shot will come out. And then I think of my last round, I had a bunker shot with lots of sand in an uphill slope, um, and I thought, cool, I haven't hit a bunker shot like this for ages. I certainly haven't practiced one, and I stood there, and even though the shot did okay, I didn't really know how it would come out. So, last time you played, how many shots did you hit that you haven't really practiced? You'll be amazed. We seem to be playing golf and uh, hitting a lot of shots that we don't really give any time to. In the comments, let me know. While you're down there, hit the thumbs up button, let me know if you like this video or not. Also, um, don't be afraid to subscribe to the channel, it's free, and you get loads of great kind of weekly golf content. Right, shot number one. This is a huge one that we play so often, maybe a lot more often than we actually want. It's a low moving shot out of trees, punch forward. So I'm gonna call this one like a low raking draw. I've got my gap, I can actually see the green, but I need to get the ball moving a little bit in the air and I need it coming out low and I need to hit it, well, we're 165 yards. So first thing I'm gonna do is think about what club I'm hitting. So it's a seven or an eight and I'm gonna go for the seven because that's gonna make it come out a little bit lower. First thing you need to be careful, I'm in the rough, which is general rule here, is you've got to find a balance, which is why we gotta practice this shot between keeping it low but still getting the ball out of the rough because the more I deal off from these kind of lies, the more the ball's just gonna kind of fall out of the air. So if I go like a four iron, I might find it just doesn't launch enough. Again, this is the main reason why we need to practice this. So I've chosen my seven iron. And again, there's always gonna be an element of guessing with this. I think this will work, but again, this is where if you're not practicing these, you're gonna have no idea if it works or not. So I'm gonna go ball back in my stance. So I'm moving the ball position towards my trail foot, handle towards lead foot, pressure more on my lead side. And the swing is gonna be about speed hitting down at the ball. And for me, I'm actually gonna try and just drop my right foot back point my face to the right side of the gap and then I'm going to try and swing out towards that right hand tree because I'm actually going to try and curve the ball a little bit now that's a little bit more specialized if yours is more just the punch forward that's absolutely fine but I'm going to go ball back handle forwards pressure forward as I make my spin the swing I'm going to keep that pressure forward you're going to see a very short and follow through but I'm going to put speed in there because this is a a lot of club to get there or a lot of distance to try and get this club there so i do need speed it's coming out low so i want this ball running let's give it a go oh yeah perfect is it drawn yeah just onto the right side bunker which i will take up by the green if you haven't got a low punching running shot with five irons six irons seven irons whatever loft that gets you going like 150 ish yards and out under trees, you need it. You've got to get this shot working as good as your drive because you're gonna play this every round where there's holes with any trees, usually in eight holes, there's some time you're gonna have to recover a little bit. And let's get your most lofted club. So for me, that's a 58 degree wedge. Now there's variations of this shot. Let's just start with a nice basic higher chip and then we can push it on a little bit as we go. So I'm gonna push this ball position just forward of my zipper. So the ball position basically is kind of in line almost towards my left chest. Then I'm gonna just add a fraction of loft to this club. It's like a tiny bit by just twisting it that way, which we would call open. So what you would feel to the right. What I'm actually gonna try and do with that as well by doing that is I'm just gonna try and get a little bit of the back of this club activating the bounce, get a little bit more of that 
onto the ground. Now you're going to feel like you're going to hit the ball to the right with this, so don't be afraid to just slightly lower the handle. That points the loft a little bit more now at the target. Medium to wide stance. I've got my left foot turned out, and now I've got no handle lean. I've tried to get the handle very much in line with that leading edge of the club. I don't want handle forwards. I want to be keeping loft on this club. Then what I'm going to do, keep my pressure pretty even, 50-50. I'm down the grip slightly, and I'm holding that little bit of extra loft. And I'm going to do a waist and shoulder turn swing with my arms trying to go pretty sink to them. And what I'm also going to be not afraid to do is try and let that club overtake my hands as it comes down and through. I'm almost going to try and get the back of the club onto the ground before the ball. And I'm going to hit the ground, but because I'm using that bounce, it's going to be a brush of the ground just to try and pop that ball up into the air into a slightly higher version of my regular chip. Now you can see here, if I use this second ball, my ball was here. My divot starts here to here. So my divot is longer than that ball and it's before, but it's not a divot where I'm taking any chunks out of the ground. It's a brush of the ground. So in effect, that loft, that bounce of that club, what I'm doing is trying to sweep that through the grass while letting that club just overtake my hands at the bottom. See how I'm flicking that lead wrist forward and up. Now, what you can do with this shot if you wanna get really specialized at it is have different levels of height. That's my higher than my standard chips. So it's a fraction higher, but Let's say I want to go really high because I want it to stop loads quicker. I'm going to do everything the same that we just talked about, but I'm going to twist the club more this way. So what we will call open or more lofted. In turn, activating even more of the back of this club onto the ground. Now with this, the risks get higher, but the rewards are higher also. So playing with different amounts of twist, with the same premise of this basic swing with no handle lean ball towards left chest quite even with your pressure hip and shoulders turning with your arms moving with it a little bit of flick forward is going to allow you to have different levels of height the only thing you're going to have to remember if you twist that face more you're going to have to lower the handle more or the ball will go off to the right and then the last thing you need to remember is the length of the swing needs to get longer the more you add that loft and you need to play with the speed. So long and slow to get that little bit more high. Higher chip shot, having this shot, is only gonna help you lower those scores. Long approach shots from the fairway. Fairway woods, high bridge, longest irons. This is a massive hole in amateur golfers play. Having a longest approach play shot from the fairway will only help you on second shots par fives long par fours these kind of things it will help you get as close to the green as possible with your next shot which will only allow you to then chip or pitch or hit that one closer having a long approach shot is so key so for me my longest approach shot from the ground is a fairway wood it's a 14 degree three wood now i don't mind for you if it's a hybrid of whatever loss 22 19 or a fairway wood whatever it is a five wood the thing you've got to start off is making sure that you go as low aloft as you can to keep the ball in play without it becoming too wild and that's going to be different for everyone watching but what i don't see many golfers doing it's finding that point, so what is the lowest loft they can control, and then in turn practicing it, which is what we're talking about today. So key points for you to practice. One, what is the lowest loft that you can hit and keep in play? You can do that at the range next time you play. Practice with your fairway wood, practice with your hybrids, and see which one does hit a kind of spectrum of shots the most. Two, what is the shape shot that you hit? So if I hit my fairway wood here from the ground, I'm gonna go for my fairway wood here, ball up towards lead foot. Got a little bit of lean behind the ball, nice wide start, similar to say my driver. I'm gonna make a nice big turn with my shoulders. I'm gonna make a big turn on the way through and I'm gonna try and put lots of speed in. For all intents and purposes, it feels very similar to my driver movement even though the fairway wood will be hit slightly different. I hit up with my driver because the ball's on the ground. I will actually be hitting down with my fairway wood, but that's all done in setup. The biggest thing I will do and practice is work out my patterns. This is something I do not see golfers doing. I tend to fade this club from the ground. So what would I do? Aim that up the left. Why fight that? If I know that's a shot that's gonna come out and that one is just cutting slightly off to the right, I'm just gonna keep playing that shot. Why would I not? There's no point fighting it. 
I'm going to aim up the left. If it's repeating, if it's coming out the same every time, I'm going to use it and gain that shot. Press comments down below. How often are you practicing your longest fairway shot? It's something I just do not see golfers practice enough. And the thing I find when I do get people to practice this shot more is it's a very repeatable shot. It might not be the prettiest one. So it might cut 30 yards through the air, but it repeats. It's the same each time. And don't be afraid, like I say, just to play that shot. For me to try and fight that, I'm just reducing my chances of getting get close to that green massively which I don't want to do. And I don't mind if, like I say, this is a hybrid, a long iron, whatever it is, the two things I want you to work on is A, working out your patterns with these shapes of shots. So what is it? Do you draw it more? Do you fade it more? What are they? And play them. And B, do push yourself. Work out what is the lowest loft you can handle and do work it into your practice regime. Massive gains to be had here. If I'm 280 out and I can hit this within 20 yards of the green, there's a good chance from 20 yards I'm going to chip it pretty close. If I'm having to hit a seven iron up there and then another seven iron, that's never going to go as close as my 20 yard chip. Simple free wins in this department. Let's talk in between wedge shots. So I've got one ball here, one just further back and one another a little bit further back. This one's 66 yards to the middle. This one's 75. This one's 87 yards to the middle. Next time you're out on the course or at your range, practice hitting different distances with your wedges. What I notice with so many amateur golfers is they're petrified in between wedge shots. They love to hit a full wedge. Trying to get the ball close to the hole as possible for most cases will allow you to lower scores. If you're absolutely hopeless of hitting the 60 or 70 or 50 yard pitches, this is something you need to practice. Let's give you some tips to help you with it. So I've got my 58 degree wedge. What I'm gonna do is have a medium width stance. I've got a fraction more pressure on my lead foot. I can actually play this from 50, 50 if I want. I'm kind of 60, 40 at the most lead foot. I've got the handle relatively straight, the tiniest amount of handle lead, and I'm gonna feel this distance by the rotations of my body and I want my arms basically to keep up with those rotations. So what I'm not gonna do is stay really static and just try and chip my arms forward. And the biggest one I see lots of amateurs doing is they make a full slow swing. I'm gonna play with length of swing and speed of swing to try and feel the distance. And that's the problem. If you're not practicing length of swing, speed of swing to feel those distances, you're gonna really struggle when you're out on the course from these distances. And it's something that I need to practice more at the moment as someone who doesn't get to practice as much as I want. It's this area where I feel really ropey because I haven't got that database of how far and how quick should I swing this club where doing this drill on a regular basis will allow me to dial those numbers in when I get on the course. I just know this length swing hits X distance. It's building up that database that's gonna allow you to hit these shots. And by having this more neutral setup, so the most common way to play this is ball back, hand forward, weight forwards, and we get these kind of chunky, big divot shots by trying to get a little bit more of a neutral interaction with the ground with a more neutral, less shaft lean, less lean forward approach to this shot. I think you'll find that you get a much more neutral strike. You won't get the variations of the big fats that go 10 yards, the fins that go 100 yards. You'll hopefully get a consistent strike to start finding some distance. So let's give it a go. Ball position, slight, it was kind of middle opposite the middle of my chest, weight a tiny bit on lead foot, hand almost level with the ball at the most. I'm going to rotate back, rotate through, and this is going to try and stay quite shallow with the ground. So by rotating back, rotating through, the club's going to be feeling like it's coming through neutral. I'm not doing big shoulder turns and then hitting massively down. Try and brush that ball forwards. Not a bad shot. Oh yeah, take that. So what I'm going to do as well with those shots, if I hit one that comes off well, I'm going to kind of note the distance. I'm going to note how far that swing felt to me. So where my shoulders turn to, where my arms turn to in relationship to my body. And I'm going to try and put that in the database for the next time I play. Again, the more you do this, you'll just start thinking, right, this hits it 45 yards or 50 yards. This hits it 70 yards. And this is a 58 degree wedge. So if I now do my full swing, this hits it, say 90. You need these benchmarks to get out there and play. Let's move back and see if I can keep it going. 
So same ideas from 70 yards, ball position pretty centered, medium width stance, definitely gonna still try and feel like a turn and turn so I get a real sweepy interaction with the ground. Also gonna feel on my follow through, that my chest starts coming up to the target. So you can see I'm pointing up. So I'm actually gonna turn through and feel like I'm coming up through my lead leg. So many people stay buried in this shot. So they're kind of, down in their lead leg trying to get into the ground because they're scared of fitting it that causes some pretty nasty strikes last one just walk back to this one this is getting closer to a fuller wedge for me now still need to feel an element of distance but we are pushing this now more to its limit so i'm going to go maybe slightly wider i will make a bigger shoulder turn bigger arm movement again trying to sync them up so what i mean by that is i'm trying to move them what feels like at a very similar time i'm trying to feel like it's the rotation that's keeping that club saying really neutral on the ground rather than too many separations that might start getting that club to really dig in. And then again, same ideas coming through the ball. Actually, it's counterintuitive for golfers, but feel like I'm getting up through lead leg, up through my chest, to make sure I don't just bury that club into the ground. And again, quite a nice neutral interaction with the ground strikes. All three of those is okay enough. It's a very shallow little grass move divot rather than an earth move divot. All it takes now, I've got that strike moving from that basic kind of rotational technique, is me to just keep doing these different distances and work out that database. The last one from the rough. We all hit the ball from the rough. So many people spend their time trying to practice not hitting the ball in the rough, which makes sense. You should be doing that, practicing your straighter drives, hitting less curve and better iron play and all those kind of things but you're gonna hit it in the rough. Best players in the world, hit the ball in the rough. How you are able to get out of the rough is a key skill. Again, I just don't see people practice at all. So key skills from the rough that's gonna allow you to advance the ball closer to that hole, get the ball as close as you can to that hole, even hit a green in some situations. Speed is one. Like you need a certain amount of speed and we need that speed going in a certain direction. Most common mistake I see people make from the rough is they choose a club. So if it comes to choosing clubs, you wanna start adding a little bit of loft to make it easier. Yes, you might not reach, but B, we're trying to advance it as far down there as we can in play. So that might mean moving it 60 yards, it might be moving it 100 yards, it might mean trying to move it 200 yards. It'll be relevant to the situation. But the premise, the idea that you want is as far down as possibly can. So if I could hit a six, not a seven, and I knew I would be able to advance it, I would hit a six. If I hit the six and it just in the long rough doesn't get in the air and it's gonna come out a bit low and a bit flat, then I'll hit the seven because that'll go further, as far down there in play. So working out what loft to play is crucial at the start, which again is why you need to get in here and actually try and practice this. So I've got my seven iron, which is as far down as I can go. I've got two balls here and I'll show you. I'm just gonna go ball position in my normal seven iron place. Um, I'm gonna try and hit this ball maybe a little harder, but put my normal seven iron swing on it and it's quite long grass and that's come out and it's in play, but it's basically gone, let's say a hundred yards out there. And I've moved a bit of the grass, but I haven't really moved that much of it. We need to get quite skilled at trying to excavate some of this area. So I'm gonna bring my second ball in here. I'm actually gonna put it the other side of the divot of that. Plenty of grass behind that ball. Oh, that is a nasty lie. Now what I'm gonna do, same club. But this time I'm going to put the ball slightly back in my stance. I'm gonna to have to handle slightly forward. I'm gonna point the face a little bit to the right. I'm gonna take a wide stance. This is a good chance this ball might come out and turn left as it gathers in that grass. That's why I'm pointing that face slightly to the right. And I am now working in aggression. So I'm gonna load a little bit of weight on that lead foot. I'm gonna make a backswing and stay loaded on that lead foot. And I'm gonna hit down and I'm gonna hit hard. Now, a few things to think about. If I'm hitting down, I might de-loft, so I might need to go up a loft to again, go further, like we said at the start. Now, hitting down compared to flat might change that. The other thing is I'm gonna try and apply lots of speed down and through. So what I do sometimes when it's really heavy rough is I actually go to a 10 finger grip, I move away from my interlocking. 
like I said at the start, speed is the skill. The reason tour players, certainly at the moment, there's a trend towards hitting it a long way, not trying to focus too much on fairways, just get it up there. If you've got a wedge from the rough, you've still got a chance of hitting the green. But the other thing, they're strong enough when they get in the rough, often to be able to still move it. We're not, and certainly your average amateur golfer, you know, with a handicap are really struggling in these situations because they are just applying their normal, nice movement kind of base swing. I don't think I've ever seen one of my students be too aggressive with the speed out of the rough. So pressure on lead foot, handle forwards, face just pointing slightly right to allow for the turn to the left. Pressure's gonna stay on the left. I'm gonna move to my 10 finger grip. So I feel I can get a little bit more speed out of it. Now I'm gonna hit down and through aggressively. Oh, and that's popped out beautiful. It's more height. That's gone at least 150 yards with speed. And that one's much closer to the green. If you now come and look at this divot, here it is, look. I have excavated, like I say. So this is the shallower approach. And this is the last one. I've, like a bunker shot, I've moved the earth to try and move that ball forwards. If you're gonna do that, you are gonna need an element of aggression that maybe you're not comfortable with, which is again, why you need to get in here and practice these kind of shots. Next time you play, if you haven't already and you look at the start of the video, just think about how often you have one, two, three, or all four of these shots in a round. And when you're stood playing the shot, just say, tell me in the comments down below, are you stood over it thinking, I'm quite comfortable, I know what I can do from here. Because what I find when I look back at my rounds, there's plenty of shots that I'm practicing, you know, standard seven iron from the fairway into a green hitting a stock yard. It's tee shot, flat, ball in hand, teed up, practicing those. But I'm getting in plenty of situations, a good amount of situations, even on good rounds, where I'm over shots thinking, cool, I haven't really played this shot for ages. Will this work? Will this come out? We can stop those nerves, those anxieties, keep those scores lower by getting good at the shots that you actually are playing out on the course. Let me know in the comments down below if this makes sense, if it's something you do practice or not. Let me know if you want to see more videos like this by hitting that like button down there. And don't be afraid to subscribe as always. Thanks for watching.